Well, good morning, guys and gals, whoever watches. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Bass Piper channel here on YouTube. And Rumble, welcome back. Those that get my videos put over there. <laughs> some get it, some don't, because sometimes my videos make it and sometimes they don't. But uh, just chilling out here for a few minutes, guys. I thought I would come on. I am. Uh, I'm trying a new a new cigar for me. It's a Macanuno, and uh, it's a barber pole. If you've never seen a barber pole, they look like this. You see the barber poles. You got two different wrappers involved there. More like a, a Connecticut and a Maduro wrapper this is a flavored cigar and um, it's an espresso and it is it is burning good so far off the jump got good uh, got a good smoke and a good taste and flavor uh, espressos of coffee cocoa here again those are pretty easy to pick up uh, the coffee and cocoa, the the flavors like leather and cedar and that type of thing. I have a hard time figuring out what they are um, or the taste. Spot pepper and spice. That's pretty easy. You can feel that on the on your tongue or on the back of your throat. But. Um, with the uh, with the coffee and the cocoa and all of that, um, you know, those are pretty easy nuances to pick up. But other than that, and the spice and the pepper, um, I can I'm understanding a little more what they mean by barnyard or earthy barnyard type. Uh, aromas they're not my favorite but um but yeah i haven't tried this in a flavor this is a flavored one uh by macanuno it's m of course they call it m by macanuno the m series is their flavored um cigars and um i've had some of their naturals and they're good uh macanuno and macanuno basically basically um, that I know of there's only just a few maybe two or three cigars that are full strength these cigars uh, stay in more of the mild to the uh, medium medium maybe a tad above but mainly medium mild to medium is where a lot of their line stays like I said, you'll run about three, two or three cigars that are full speed, full potent, uh, full strength, um, and nicotine and that type of thing. But they're mainly a line of just mild to medium cigars, which makes it nice for the beginners and, and just people that just don't want full strength. But um, these are good good um good tasting cigars um so i just want to go get on here a minute i hadn't i hadn't smoked one of these in a video but uh that's what it looks like again just a big old m this is macanuno on the bottom this is a toro size it's a six by 50 or 50 by six um and um as I told you before in other videos, I am uh, I am liking more of the robusto, robusto, however you want to pronounce it, uh, in the five and a half, or really from the four and a half to five and a half range because they vary. As some of you all know, that smoke cigars, depending on what brand or what you know. You've got about three different sizes of Robusto. Now, they're the short ones, the four and a half, um, you know, they're nice. They're good because you don't have to take up a lot of time 
the Toros are about my max. I, I'm not a Churchill guy. I'm not going to sit for two hours with a cigar. And depending on how the Toro is, I don't sit with that. What I normally do with mine, I smoke mine down to probably about the beginning or right somewhere into the third to final, uh, final round of it. Um, what I do is I go about, I take my finger, and where that mark is right there to the top is about two inches. Okay, each little digit there, usually on most people, it's an inch, about roughly about an inch. So I take it and I put it right there and I lay it down. So I will smoke it to about right there. When I get to about right here, that's usually when I'm putting them out. I go to about a two inch mark. I don't take them down to the nub. I, um, and so, uh, because I know when you get into the final third, a lot of times it starts to make a change or you start getting more bitterness or because also it starts getting... Now, we talk in the pipe world. <clears throat> we talk in the pipe world about tongue bite. <laughs> when I... Uh, this is wanting to burn a little off. When I... Uh, when we talk about... Give me a minute, guys. Let me let me pop this one up here real quick. Get this thing back on back on track. When we talk about um, tongue bite, that's usually where you got to be careful with the cigars. When you get to that final third, that final third, right right there, if you can see it, right in there. In, on this particular cigar, the band's back more than some. But that final third, uh, you got to be careful. You just got to draw a little slower. Or it will, uh, it'll nip you. You'll feel the heat naturally because you're so close. But, um, but I try to get rid of it before that. And, um, so anyway, I just wanted to uh, come on here and show you this particular one. Uh, if you like a flavored cigar, would like to try one. The Macanuno, the M by Macanuno Espresso Barber Pole. It looks like a barbershop pole. Um, give it a try. It, I think you might like it. And um, so, like I said, it's got good flavor, good room note, not very pungent, you know. It's, it's a nice overall cigar. Um, so anyway, that's about all I've got today. I'm just chillaxing here waiting on the rain because we've got some more rain coming today. We did get the break yesterday, and I am so glad I was able to cut my grass and get everything done um, uh, before all this came in today. And uh, But around here in Virginia, you've ever heard the old saying, you know, especially for Virginia and this area of Virginia, if you don't like the weather, give it about 10 minutes. it will change and so um, you can't even go by the 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 radars on your iPhones um, you know I've seen it where it's showing nothing or hardly nothing and we're in the middle of a thunderstorm I mean it's like it's crazy so you got to get out here and you got to do what you got to do when you can do it and uh, I usually try to take care of my lawn in the evening if I can once the sun kind of goes down but um, here lately you can't do that you just got to bite the bullet and get out there in the middle of the day to do it <laughs> or else you'll have grass that high you know 
if you keep waiting and waiting and waiting. And like I said, I try to keep my grass on about a three inch. I start off in the spring with a two and a half when it's cooler. And as it gets warmer, uh, I learned a trick, at least it worked here for me, um, is that uh, if you don't have an irrigation system um, and it starts getting hot, try to keep your grass at three. It tends to last longer before it burns up and gets real hot because when it rains or how often you get rain or even if you sprinkle it with a little spike sprinkler you know i did that for about 10 years moving hoses and spike sprinklers all over the place the only problem is when you get into july and august here in virginia while you're watering one corner the other other corners burn and slam up you can't keep up with it fast enough that's why if you can and when you can you invest in an irrigation system an underground sprinkler system on your lawn put it on a computer like i've got it here in the house Hit it, program it, and leave it. It's done. And uh, it does its own thing. T waters it certain times of the day. If I don't want it watered, it won't water it. And so I don't have to fool with it. But I paid my dues about 10 years of just pulling and pulling. Till I finally got one year, they made this tractor. It was a yellow tractor with a big old sprinkler thing that, that spun around. And you would lay your hose out all through your yard and you put that thing it had a wheel that went in went on the hose in between the hose uh, the front wheel did and w when the thing turned it would it would roll around on the hose so your little tractor would go around the yard and uh, but even with that it wasn't putting out enough and using city water at that time you just you know your, your water bill would be out the roof and so uh, Um, I finally broke down about 18 years ago and put an irrigation system in. But now I would give you a word of caution for that. And that is, before you ever look at putting an irrigation system in your yard, <laughs> make sure you got everything you want in your yard. To put an irrigation system down and you go, you know what, I think Two years from now, I think I want to put a put a shed over here. Well, you got heads over there. Or I want to, I got to lay a cement slab, but I want to put it four inches in the ground. Or what? Well, you got pipes running all under there. <laughs> so now you've got to redo all of that and get somebody to come back over and move all of that before you can do your project. So make sure you got everything in place that you think you're going to want. Well, then let them put the irrigation system in where they can go around all the obstacles. And um, because that's what happened to Base Piper. Several years after I had it down with the quartet, we wanted to put a, expand our driveway to put the coach that we had that we traveled in. We had a Class A, 40-foot Class A that we traveled in, and I put a carport back here in the back. But when they came to lay the driveway of course these irrigation systems are only about four inches below the grass the zone one that i had which actually the building is sitting on it <laughs> uh and the zone seven eight nine up here in the front all got ripped man they come in with a bullet with a little front loader to scrape off all the grass. And man, when I looked out here, all my pipe, all my PVC was laying up on a mountain of dirt, man. I'm going, holy smokes. So, um, which I didn't need it anyway, because it was all going to be concreted. But I'm going, okay, that was money thrown down the toilet after several years. But they had to do it to lay the driveway. So that's what I'm getting at. Uh, learn from my mistake. Put everything you want in and then get you one. But if you don't have one and you have no interest in getting one, try to keep your grass at about three inches. Uh, the problem that I see so much in our neighborhood is that the people want to get out here and they want to scout the grass right down to dirt. I mean, they put it on a two inch or a one and a half inch 
And then, and then in two or three weeks, man, it is totally brown or spotty. It looks like crap. Um, and they go, man, what's going on with my grass? Well, you're cutting it too short. The sun is burning it slam up. So uh, get your grass about three inches, you know. You, know, you may have to cut it a few more times. But if you want a nicer lawn, you do what you got to do. But the irrigation system, I've had people come up to me and go, wait, how come y'all's grass looks nice? How come y'all, well, I put fertilizer on it. Um, I buy 100% nitrogen, which in the bag that I've got, it's like 34%. That's all that's in it. That's all that's in it. You used to could get it around here, the nitrogen in the bags, that you had to sign a waiver. Because it was 100%. I mean... You had to sign a waiver that you weren't going to make nothing out of it to do any damage. <laughs> so, uh, but buddy, you put that on there, man. And even with this 3400, nothing but nitrogen. Man, in two or three days, pow, and green, nice dark green. And then you go over there with a the lawnmower, you know, and you get it all nice and cut. And she looks sharp. Uh, but those will take a lot. And then with an irrigation system, it keeps it watered every day. And um, then you got to worry about it. And you don't have to be rich to have one. Uh, you can probably, depending on the size yard you got or whatever, I got a half acre. Mine 18 years ago was about $4,000, 4500 somewhere in there to put it in. That was front and back. That was 13, that was 13 zones. I had 53 heads on my property. So it's not too shabby. It's not too much. Um, But I tell you, uh, you sink your well, little shallow well, put your system in. You'll be sitting there thinking, man, why didn't I do that 20 years ago? But I mean, everybody does what they got to do. And, um, but I'm just sharing. I don't know how I got on grass and lawn on, on this video. How do I go from a cigar to grass and lawn? Um... But anyway, I done burned up 17 minutes talking about grass. Um, but if you don't have an irrigation system or anything, keep your grass a little higher. I found out, guys, uh, if you're having that problem, uh, don't cut it so close, man. You're going to burn it, slam up. Now, some don't care. They don't want to have to cut it. That's fine. But if you're trying to get you some grass to look decent, you ain't going to get it cutting it at one and two inch and letting the sun just fry it. So, um, anyway, on that note, I'm going to uh, pack it in, and we'll talk with you later. So, until we meet again, um, hey, man, relax and have a pipe. Or a Macanuno. Uh, burning pretty good now that I had to do the relight. I just got to touch it up a little bit. I'm getting a good little stack of dimes going there um, so uh, we will uh, we will talk with you later don't forget the many blessings God gives us each and every day even the ones we don't see immediately even the things we don't think he's doing he's doing behind the scenes so we'll talk with you guys later y'all have a good one bye bye